Everyone in the world by now must have heard about the tragic oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico or leak of oil continuing. And we thought that it would be interesting to show you what crude oil is really like. After much searching around the university, my colleague Sam found some samples. They're here. You can see some of them are beginning to leak already. And there's a terrible stink of oil in here. So we go in the lab and have a look at them there. So oil is quite complicated material. It's formed under the ground at great depth from layers of plant material and animal material, which is compressed by the rocks and the weight of the rocks. Oil is not the same from everywhere over the world because it just depends how the rocks in that particular place had been treated over millions of years. Some crude oil that comes out of the ground is really runny, like, um, almost like water, and others is so thick that it's even thicker than molasses or treacle. In the Gulf of Mexico, the oil is being released into the sea. So let's see what happens when you mix oil and water. So here we have some water. All crude oil is less dense than water, so it floats. So even if you release it at the bottom of the sea, it's going to float up to the surface. So here again, I've got the North Sea oil, the rather runny oil. And if we fill up some oil here, put it to the bottom of the sea, and now release it slowly. So you can see straight away that the oil is floating on the surface in a very thin layer. If you look at it from the side, you can hardly see it at all. So you can immediately see the sort of cleanup problem that you're going to have because the oil covers a huge area, but a very thin layer on the surface of the sea. So there's not very much to scoop up in any one place. And the other point about oil is that it repels water. There's the famous saying, oil and water don't mix. Now, the big problem comes with wildlife, particularly birds. The reason that birds can sit on the water and don't sink is because they have oil on their feathers, natural oils that repel the water. When a duckling is first hatched from the egg, if you put it in the water, it sinks. It takes several days for the oil to go on the feathers so they can swim. So therefore, when birds' feathers come into contact with crude oil, there's a problem. And I've got some feathers here. These are from a pillow, so don't worry, I haven't killed a bird to get it. And here's some feathers. And let's just see what happens if we put the feathers into the oil. And you can see it's a, like a miracle. It cleans up all the oil. But for the poor bird, all the water repellent properties of its feathers are spoilt. You've got this thick oil which make the feathers clump together. The water gets to the bird's skin and they get cold. Eventually they can die of hypothermia and of course they can't fly because their feathers aren't fluffy anymore. The way that you can clean up the birds and remove the oil is by using so-called surfactant. This is essentially like soap. What it does is to allow the oil to form tiny, tiny droplets, which are essentially do no harm. The difficulty is that the surfactants that remove the crude oil also remove the oil from the bird's feathers. People know how to clean up water, but it is the scale of the problem. You're talking about slicks of oil that are covering hundreds, if not thousands, of square miles.